Uh, so we've got Anas up next to uh, talk about advocacy work. So Anas is here from the Berber community, Berber language. Yeah. Uh, so originally when the conferences started, it was really focused on Celtic languages, but I think it was such a useful network of people. There was a really good body, you know, really positive energy. So it has, in that short space of time, it has drawn in other minority languages. And I think we're very interested to hear what you have to say, because I think you've got even bigger issues than us <laughs> in certain things that we could learn from. So Absolutely. over to you. Thank you very much. Uh, so hello all, my name is Anas. I come from uh, Morocco. And uh, as Mark mentioned, uh, I'm working with the, the Berber language, but I'm also doing a lot of editing in the Arab language. Uh, so in this presentation, I will not really present the Berber uh, case. I will present it later in the afternoon. I have another presentation about it. But in this one, I'm going to talk about advocacy, working in Wikimedia, because I am a, a member of a working group uh, in Wikimedia Foundation in relation with the strategy, which is about the advocacy work. So my presentation is going to be uh, mainly about two axes. First is what is done currently for the advocacy, and second, what we as minority uh, language speakers should do and advocate uh, for our cases in order to improve our situations. Uh, so the agenda of uh, my presentation will be the following. First of all, I will present the Wikimedia 2000 strategy uh, work, which is ongoing currently. Uh, it's a very unique opportunity and it's a big luck that we have this uh, conference at this exact point of time, because it's now that the recommendations are written. And if any one of you has any feedback, it's really the perfect time to send this feedback to the working groups, because then they can shape the recommendations from now until October. So it's, it's really a big luck that we have the conference in that time. Uh, then after presenting the strategy work, I will uh, go on to the uh, main team, which is advocacy, and uh, especially the work which are, uh, and the group that I'm working in, which is the advocacy working group. And there I'm going to present, uh, again, how it's uh, working for the 2030 strategy, what is the scope and what is the current situation, and what we here can uh, affect and uh, can give as a feedback. Uh, then I will uh, proceed to link between the advocacy and minority languages, because advocacy can be linked to mostly everything. But in this specific context, we need uh, to link it with the minority languages, because there are specific issues and issues that are related just to this uh, area that need to be tackled and being in this conference is really a good opportunity to show our challenges and to give feedback about them so that they can be part of the recommendation when, when the recommendations are, are written. And finally we'll conclude with conclusions and uh, some discussion. So uh, the Wikimedia 2030 strategic direction is uh, a work that was started by the Wikimedia Foundation and by the Wikimedia movement uh, in uh, 2018. The idea is that uh, the Wikimedia movement wants to have a strategy for uh, the 10 upcoming years. So in 2030, there are a lot of goals that needs to be reached from different levels and from different perspectives. And the idea is that uh, there will be working groups working on shaping these goals and uh, giving recommendations by the end of this year to make uh, work done on these goals. Uh, there are different themes and areas that I will present uh, in, in a moment. But the idea is that all these teams and areas should be tackled and a lot of challenges should be solved and a lot of uh, new things will be coming so that in 2030 uh, the Wikimedia movement should be, for example, more inclusive, uh, more diverse, uh, having be, being basically better than what it is currently. Uh, as I mentioned, there are nine working groups working on, on these items and in total it's 90 people. So from these 90 people, some people are volunteers such uh, as myself, and there are other people that are staff in uh, either the Wikimedia Foundation or in some affiliate in some country. Uh, and there are also people who are experts that are from outside the movement, but they are experts in some of the areas. For example, in advocacy, we have uh, people who are experts in laws and in the juridical systems that are very useful to have and can help us to understand the problematics from uh, another angle. Uh, and then there is also the core team. Uh, the core team is a team that is above all the working groups and it's supporting uh, the working groups in uh, mostly administrative things. And it's also the link between the working groups and the Wikimedia Foundation. Uh, so these are the working groups that are working for the 2030 strategy. Uh, so when you, when you look at each one of them, you can think about different challenges that you have and how you think 
this can be solved in your context and uh, each of the groups could be contacted separately and they're shaping, as I mentioned, the strategy uh, for 2030. So for example, roles and responsibilities is the one that is uh, taking into consideration the roles and responsibilities that are now, if anything should be changed, for example, if the model that is happening now with chapters and user groups is the best model, if the Wikimedia Foundation should be centralized in the USA, if it should be international, etc. And it's the same for each of these groups. Uh, I don't think I'll have the time to detail for each of them, but you are very welcome to read of them or, or ask me and then I can refer you to where you can find more information about them. But basically, each of these teams are the core teams for the strategy that needs to be implemented. So uh, tackling each of these ones and giving them your specific uh, issues and challenges is very important because then they will have your insight and they can work, work on, a, on finding solutions for it. And as I mentioned, I'm a member of the advocacy working group, so my presentation will be mostly uh, highlighting the advocacy part. Uh, so this is a, a scheme showing what I've been talking about. So up you find the nine working groups on sort of a wheel. And then there's the support, which is the core team. And then there's a Catherine, which is the executive director for the Wikimedia Foundation. And finally, the board of trustees. So what does this mean? So the working groups are working uh, constantly and having weekly meetings and a lot of uh, work, either online or also in person meeting. And then the, with the support of the core team and the foundation, they will write these recommendations that I talked about, and also with support of the community, of course. The recommendation will be written and they will be sent to the Board of Trustees. And the Board of Trustees of the Wikimedia Foundation will be the one deciding if those recommendations should be taken into consideration. Uh, here, of course, you can uh, say why is it the Board of Trustees that uh, is going to decide. Uh, but then this also could be reported to roles and responsibilities. For, uh, uh, group, for example. So this is the idea, is that if there is anything we should think about or any feedback, it's the time to, to talk about. Uh, this is a brief timeline of uh, the strategy work that is go ongoing currently. So as you see, we are in the middle of community conversations. So uh, until the end of June, we had open discussions that it was more uh, discussions with the community in different uh, formats, so interviews or assisting to conferences, but it can be still extended until the end of September, so this focus strategy salons or whatever conference include also this kind of conference, and it's the best way and the best moment to get uh, feedback for the working groups, because if you see here, the recommendations will be finalized by October and sent to the Board of Trustees, and then after being sent, they will be implemented. So from October 2019 and until 2030, there will be very small room for change. While now we have really a big room if we want to uh, to give our impact, let's say. And this is why it's very relevant for uh, us as minority language uh, community members to give our feedback because then we will really have the impact we would like to have if we push for it and if we give uh, our feedback. Uh, so th these are the missions of the working group, as I mentioned. Uh, first, they have to put a scope for the, these different nine areas that we talked about. Uh, because in most of the contexts, it's very difficult to have a scope. What is advocacy? Everyone can define advocacy the way they, they think it's most relevant, but it doesn't mean that the others will agree about it. So uh, defining the scope was a very long process that took us maybe four to five months, and it's still an ongoing work because every time you need a, a new community or every time you go for a different group, they will add some insight that you maybe didn't think about. And th this is why it's important to, to work on the scope. But once the scope finalized, then comes the next part, which is writing the recommendations. And it's the part where we are currently. So uh, you have to meet as many people as possible and try to understand their issues and try to understand also how they suggest to solve these issues. And the suggestions of solutions would be the recommendations in this case. For example, one recommendation that I can see as obvious when I come to this conference is I don't know that uh, there should be a support for the Cornish language and then you can develop it. Uh, for example, you should uh, create some kind of council that will harmonize the writing way so that nobody will fight about it in the future and we can write more articles. So th these kind of recommendations shouldn't be that, that detailed because it includes the whole world. So we don't have, want to have 7,000 recommendations because there are 7,000 languages. <laughs> so uh, so it's, uh, it's a bit... Uh, uh, our work also in the group that we try to t take different feedback and also cluster them 
put them in a way that they will include everyone and solve most of the problems. But this is what you're encouraged to do. It's to think about your context and try to shape suggestions and recommendations that you want uh, the working groups and of course the foundation in the future to be tackling and to be solving in, in, in their strategy for 2030. And finally, there's the implementation. So after the recommendations are sent and agreed, they will be implemented, and this is the process that will take the longest time. It will be from 2020 until 2030. So if you understand, or if you see my point, uh, when I talked about the timeline, we have roughly one year to discuss about something that will be done for 10 years. And this is why I said that we were very lucky to have the conference in that time, because it's the time that we give uh, the feedback and the suggestions. If we have it next year, the process will be already in the implementation phase, and it cannot really be uh, or maybe it could be, but for the moment, the information that I have is not, it will not really be updated after that. So it's very good time where we're having our work. So in, in advocacy working group, uh, our vision is kind of simple. We want in 2030, everyone to access, use, transform, and build on Wikimedia projects within the legal and functional environments, which enable them to share the diversity of knowledge and express it freely. These environments nurture free knowledge that is created and maintained within and outside the Wikimedia movement. It is simple and complicated. Why? Because talking about people accessing and using freely is still something that is vague. You can access and use freely uh, Wikipedia in China, maybe in English, but now not in Chinese. Now you cannot access it in any language I know but when I prepared it was possible. <laughs> uh, anyway, so uh, the idea is that you can always claim that you can access, but does it mean that you will access in your language? Does it mean that you will access in a way that you understand? Uh, so ev even accessibility is a discussable concept. And this is why I said that the scoping is, in, is very important to shape, and it's not to be shaped within a small group, clustered group, but it's to be shaped with, with the community because everyone from the community has different points of view. Uh, and in our advocacy working group, we work a, lo a lot with the legal frameworks, so public policies, we think that it's very important to encourage partnerships either with political partners, not all political partners, depends on the country, on the situation, of course, but it's very important to advocate to as many people as possible, to as many organizations as possible, uh, so that uh, the freedom of knowledge could be known first by everyone and then supported by everyone, because it's, it's two different things. And this is why the context is very important, because in, when we talk about advocacy, uh, some people think about it as raising awareness. So in some countries or some areas, people don't even know what is Wikipedia. People don't know that there is a place where you can search for information and you'll get it for free. So this is advocacy. But in other contexts, everyone knows about Wikipedia and advocacy would be more like lobbying, for example, into political parties so that these political parties will support Wikipedia if they are in the government and they can make uh, educational... Uh, uh, partnerships with the, the government or the Ministry of Education. So advocacy is very complex depending on, on which situation we are and which region of the world we are. Uh, but the most important that we have to remember is that it's important to advocate for the free knowledge wherever we are and try to overcome the political barriers. I know that it's not possible everywhere and this is why the strategy is not one strategy but it's different strategies depending on, on where we are. Uh, I will not really go into details here because there is a lot of text and I believe that the slides will be shared with you later, hopefully. Uh, so uh, here I, uh, it's just a presentation of what we are doing in our group so that we show what are the strengths, the weaknesses, the opportunities and the threats that are uh, for uh, advocating Wikipedia. And this is of course very, very context dependent. So it's not applicable to all the contexts. For example, that you go to prison if you support Wikipedia is not applicable here, I hope. <laughs> but it, it's uh, applicable some in some other places, unfortunately, and, and vice versa. So it depends a lot on, on the context. Uh, so uh, then in the advocacy, we have necessary conditions because uh, if we want to implement the strategy we talked about, and even if we give the recommendations, we still need support. And this is not only from the Wikimedia Foundation or from the movement, but this is for everyone who wants to advocate for, uh, for uh, Wikimedia. So, for example, the first thing is that you need to have tools. Uh, so it's, okay, let's suppose I go into the street and ask people, would you write in Wikipedia and do you like to write in Wikipedia? But then if I don't have knowledge myself, 
someone could ask me, okay, yeah, I'm interested. Can you teach me how? And then I say, I don't know. Then, then if I don't have this tool, I cannot really advocate. So uh, whenever advocating, it's very important to think about having the tools yourself and prepare these tools yourself uh, so that you are in a good condition for advocating. But it's, I mean, what I said is very simplistic because it depends also from region to another, but sometimes the tools are mostly legal tools that you are, for example, registered association in your country so that you don't have any issues when you organize a conference, for example, and that, that nobody says that it's illegal or this is against the laws. So uh, it's, it's a bit complex and uh, it's also very context dependent, depending on, on what language you advocate for. For example, you can be in the same region, in the same country, when you advocate in the majority language, you are very well seen. But when you advocate for the minority language, you may might be seen as a separatist or as a problematic person. So it's, it's very dependent, and this is why the strategies should be different depending on what you are doing and how you intend to do it. But the most important is that everyone should be allowed to do that, and everyone should be safe when doing that. Uh, so these are our scoping questions when we try to define our scope. I will unfortunately not, not, not go really into detail because I don't have much time. Uh, but uh, you are very welcome to read them either in our meta page or in the slides later. But the main idea is that we would like here to define what is advocacy and also we would like to understand how we can advocate and what are the steps that need to be taken uh, for good advocacy in the future. Uh, why I'm here? I'm here because there is the community conversation that is ongoing, as I showed in the timeline. So besides the group that is uh, the work that is done uh, in the closed groups, there is a community conversation which aims to get feedback from the broad community and from everyone who is interested in the movement. And the idea is that uh, ideas and feedback coming from these people are very important for implementing the recommendations and uh, all these points because no matter how expert you can be, uh, we are six people in our group, so we cannot know all the issues that are happening in, in Papua New Guinea, uh, unfortunately. Uh, so it's very important to know from everyone in the community what they think about advocacy, but also about the nine others or the eight others, and uh, that they can be proactive in giving feedback and in providing ideas for how they would like to see Wikimedia in 2030 if Wikimedia wants to be, for example, in all languages. What are the necessary conditions? What needs to be changed? So there is there a link uh, in the slides for the community strategy liaisons in seven languages. I'm the liaison for the Arabic language, and uh, I have colleagues in other languages as well. Uh, it's one way of giving feedback, is to contact the liaison. And then there are other ways. So you can either contact the working group directly. I have also the links in my presentation. Or you can participate to a survey called the strategy survey. Uh, where there is also a link uh, in the presentation where you can give directly your feedback about the strategy process. And you can also participate to strategy salons, organizing new regions. I don't know if there is one in the UK, but uh, we have at least one in Morocco and in many countries. It's organized by the affiliates, so you can contact Wikimedia UK if you want to know if, if there is something organized, or you can even organize one by yourself. You can get a grant and organize it and discuss about the strategy. And this is Maybe a good idea when it, uh, when it comes to the Cornish uh, language or the Cornwall region, if you want to discuss very local issues, that you just apply for a grant, you host the strategy salon, and you send the feedback for the strategy team. So this is, for example, example of uh, feedback that we received from our advocacy group, uh, so that it can inspire you and let you know what people think and how they, they shape their, their ideas. So for example, Wikimedia Foundation should create a strong legal body that can protect community members everywhere. And this is a very relevant feedback because some people in some areas have trouble because they were advocating for Wikipedia or Wikimedia or they were advocating for free knowledge. Unfortunately, this is how the world is currently. And one solution would be to create a legal body or to uh, give or provide legal help for these people because it's not happening currently. Uh, then there are also other feedback like having a legal representation in every country, but this is also problematic because in some countries, even if you have legal kind of representation, you will still have issues. Uh, there is also one very important, which is lobbying in the media, and this is mostly re related to the gender gap, because one of the problems that people are uh, having when they write articles about women is that there are not many sources. So you can be keen on writing about women, but the article will be removed because there is no source for this woman. And the reason is that the media themselves are biased and write more about men than women. 
And this uh, could be about all minorities, not only about women. So if you talk about minority languages, if the minority languages are marginalized in their countries, of course the media will not talk about them. So even if you write a Wikipedia article, the Wikipedia article has a big probability to be removed because it doesn't have a source. And why doesn't it have a source? It's because media doesn't write about it. And it's, it's a moment 22 or a vicious circle. And the solution or one of the feedback that we received is that the foundation or the community members should lobby into the media or get into the media so that this is uh, solved and more articles are written about the minorities somehow. Uh, and then a funny uh, but very uh, true uh, feedback was that the foundation should uh, change its name from Wikimedia Foundation to Wikipedia Foundation because if they do so, it will be easier to advocate and easier to give the brand name for, for, uh, for Wikipedia and you will sleep explanation of every time what is the difference between Wikimedia and Wikipedia. But this is just to give you an idea about the current feedback. So uh, in the context of minorities, uh, currently, most of the feedback received by the, in the strategy process uh, is from the loud voices. It's mostly from biggest communities, majority languages, white men from the West. This is mostly uh, what is uh, happening in, in the feedback for the strategy. And it's not only in our group, but in all the other groups. And this is why we're seeking feedback from, from any other part, because then we will have more inclusiveness and more diversity. Uh, we know that uh, there are different challenges uh, when it comes to advocacy uh, around the world. For example, when you, you talk about the minority language, is this language accepted in, in its state? Does this language, uh, or does the person who advocates for a language have problems if they do so? How can we tackle that? Uh, for example, is it a danger if you advocate either for your language or in your language? In, in some places, if you write Wikipedia articles in your mother tongue, you can have issues if they know who you are. So it's not very easy to advocate and it, we shouldn't just say, okay, just go and write in Wikipedia, it's so cool. Uh, because maybe you will put this person in danger while you are in a comfort zone somewhere else. So it's very important to, to know uh, what we're talking about and we, to care about the, the safety of people and that they're comfortable when they're doing a the work. Uh, also, there, there is another problem, I know that I don't have much time, but this is very important for me to talk about because uh, it's uh, <coughs> something that I see almost every day, which is the neutrality when we advocate for uh, minority languages. So I myself advocate a lot for minority languages in Wikipedia, but I see that unfortunately it's not always good to have Wikipedias in small languages, especially in the beginning, because what happens is that there will be one or two people writing in these Wikipedias, and they will mostly write their own views and their own things. And you cannot even control it because you don't speak that language and you don't know anything about it. So if it's someone, for example, from some extreme or has extremist uh, ideas or points of view, they will be reflected on that Wikipedia. And usually since not a lot of people are editing there or not a lot of people are active there, it would be mostly the points of view of this person, of these two people that will be represented there. So it's a kind of dangerous, especially in the beginning when you advocate for small languages and uh, people have to be careful about it. Uh, there is no solution yet for it because usually people are very excited when someone wants to write in a minority language so they just let people write. Uh, but there should be in the future some kind of control or, or at least some way to see if these Wikipedias are really neutral and if not, how this could be solved. Uh, and uh, yeah, also another point which is ensuring democracy in, in the communities there because what is happening also is that when one person starts or initiates a project, especially in the minority language, this person feels more or less that they are the owner of the project and that they are the eternal president of, of, of this group or of, the, of, this, of this community. Uh, and it's also dangerous for the community itself uh, because uh, it will not help it to grow. It's, it's a good start to have kind of benevolent dictator, but it should be also boosted and have a bigger community. Uh, and uh, yeah, this is the time plan, as I mentioned, why it's important to give the feedback now, because if you don't give it until October, you will unfortunately not have the opportunity to give, up, to give it in another time, maybe after 2013. <laughs> uh, I hope not, but, but this is the timeline that I received. So this is why I really stress and insist that it's very important to give input, especially when we're talking about groups such as minority uh, language speakers, because we have our specific issues and we need to let uh, the working groups and the foundation know about it. 
so these are the references, uh, links and contacts that you can find in my slides for what I've been talking about if you want to contact any working group or any person. Uh, otherwise, you can contact me for these two days and I can uh, give you any information that you would need about the strategy process. And that's it. Thank you. I think, uh, thank you, Anas, because I think that's clearly an important opportunity. So maybe tomorrow afternoon in the closing session, if we as a conference could uh, bring together some initial ideas to feedback to you, um, and at least, you know, capture some of the ideas while we're all together here. So, all right. Is there one quick question while these guys are setting up? Okay, I'm just curious. I'm guessing that some, there's a number of fun with the articles in English that um, may rely on some older, old Italian sources, for instance, the 1911 Encyclopedia Britannica. Um, now, can that some end up making it harder to judge the neutrality of any small? language Wikipedia, particularly a language has not been um, a written language for most of its speakers in, and because you're comparing that neutrality against um, sort of the majority view from 100 years ago, which might not be kind of what, what um, the community might think of as neutral. Thank you. This is a very relevant question and relevant point. And actually, I was going to talk about it in the afternoon session because I would talk ex exactly about the Berber language, so I would put more challenges. But your point is very relevant, and it raises actually kind of philosophical questions about what is, uh, what is the role of Wikipedia? Is it to show image of the world? Because in this case, there are some or many wrong ideas that a lot of people have, but for them it's the truth, and it's a fact. So should it be put as a fact, or should it be put as people claim, or people have claimed before, that this is what was said. But it's, it's a very important question, because uh, when you think about archiving and documentation, you don't really make the difference between encyclopedia or archive. And uh, for, for me, it could, can be a difference, because maybe encyclopedia is most facts, while archive is everything that is said and then put in, in some kind of archive. So it's, it's a very relevant question, actually, and it's very difficult. I, I don't have an answer, I'm sorry. <laughs>